coming up next, uh, we're gonna we're gonna chat with the folks from Cornell. Head coach Dan Sponstrom is gonna be joining us. He's gonna be uh, bringing with him uh, linebacker Damon Barnes and, and also quarterback Jameson Wong. Uh, see, Coach Swanstrom seems to be with us right now. We'll see if we can get Coach. Welcome, glad to have you here with us. Thank and you. we'll see if the other guys will be joining us while while we're waiting for them. Up oh, here we go. Jameson Wong, Damon Barnes. Good, both with us, gentlemen. Welcome. Thank you so much all for joining us. Um, coach, let me start with you. Uh, and what we've been doing with each of our head coaches is asking them to give just some preliminary thoughts on the, the upcoming season. We've described it as a sort of a state of the program address. Yours, obviously, you've, you've been involved winter, spring, ready to start your first summer camp. Um, but based upon what you've seen so far, give us your thoughts for this upcoming season. Yeah. Moving forward, just, uh, you know, hired in December, um, got to go through the spring um, with the players. And uh, um, I, I thought the energy w was really high. And, uh, you know, really, guys really tried to make a big commitment to to the sport of football and what I was asking of them. And, um, you know, weren't around them much this summer, you know, just per NCAA rules. But um, I've heard good things about the work that was put in this summer. And, um now it's truly just about moving forward and uh, getting to practice, getting to be with the players again. Um, you know, how we're, we're going, where we're going. I don't have uh, the answers for you. You know what I mean? I, I can't predict the future, but um, you know, what we're worried about right now is just what's in front of us and um, how good we can handle the day in front of us. And if we can get just a little bit better each and every day, we'll see where the outcomes take it. But um, the energy is high. Um, there's excitement. Um, there's there's passion for the sport of football. And you got a coaching staff that is um, really excited to be at Cornell and really excited about the, the collection of players that we inherited. Yeah, but the coaching staff, including yourself, of course, and, and you've had experience in the Ivy League. Uh, interestingly, each of the new head coaches – have deep experience within the league. You have experience in in Ithaca, um, in terms of your coaching there. Uh, so now having the chance to step on the the sidelines here as the head coach, um, I think in in many instances, not that you haven't been a head coach before, but now it's it's a, a different place in a league that you know very well. But I suspect there are still uncertainties when you walk into it. So so. Talk a little bit about again now as the 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 new head coach at Cornell, how you approach your job and and it basically creating your own sense of this program. The the uncertainties um, go around coaching eighteen to twenty two year old men and being judged on ten games as a. Uh, uh, on the outcomes, you know, the, the unknown, you know what I mean? Um, those are the uncertainties, but as far as my comfort as the head coach, my five years as the head coach at Ithaca college and the preparation, um, uh, being a coordinator, um, you know, I, I was a coordinator at Johns Hopkins in 2009, um, was six years. So, um, I truly feel that I've never been more prepared to be in this position where I am. I am more prepared to be the head coach at Cornell than I was to be the head coach at Ithaca College. And those years of reps uh, have put me in a place where I have complete comfort in what I'm doing and what I'm building. Um, the outcomes I can't predict, um, but I do know this, we're gonna run a great program. Um, it is going to have high standards and high expectations. Um, we're gonna demand a lot from our students. We're gonna, we're gonna challenge them in the classroom. We're gonna stretch them on the football field. Um, I'm going to lead. Our coaches are going to lead. We are going to be a player-led program. And uh, we do those right things over and over. We'll see where the outcomes take us. But, um, you know, you know when you're, when you're the head coach um, at Ithaca College, that program is the most important thing to you in the world. And, uh, and the players in that program and the coaches. And um, you walk back and you sit down in this seat and the feelings are exactly the same. And, now that I'm the head coach of an Ivy League institution here at Cornell, um, you know, it, it may seem like a bigger stage, but in my gut and in my stomach, um, 
you know, the moments in my life prior, those were the biggest moments for me. So the feelings are the same. And then I, it's, it's exciting. I mean, football is an amazing sport and to get to be the head coach at Cornell and to coach these young men and to lead these coaches um, is everything I've ever wanted in this profession. Well, as you said, it, it, it's a great school. Uh, one of the great settings. I love playing at Shalkoff field. Uh, when we would, my Yale team would come up there to play, there was it was one of actually it was I think the second place to put down astroturf. It was early. The astroturf yes. was was terrible, but it looked great. And I think as a player, you walked out onto it, and you said, "Oh, this is really cool. I'm feeling like I'm in the NFL here right now." So it, it's a it's a great program. I'm sure you know that. Looking ahead, I'm going to ask you the same question I've asked the uh, the coaches. Looking ahead again, it, it's you know you you haven't started practice yet, but you have some basis or your knowledge of this team. Um, let's talk strengths on the offensive side. What do you anticipate the strengths should be of this Cornell offense this season? We have so many unknowns. I mean, literally, th this program is just full of question marks um, on, on every side of the ball. Um, and the only evidence I have is what we did against each other. Um, so are we good on offense? Are we good on defense? Are we bad on both and just kind of beating up each other? That's the information I do have. Now, my history in this league and, and have watched and poured over film the past two years, you know, I do expect our quarterback to play well, and I expect him to play at a super high level. And uh, I have high expectations and high standards for him, and, and I fully expect him to, to be our leader and our strength on offense. How about um, defense? Looking at, at what you anticipate the strengths to be for the defensive side of the ball? Once again, we don't have a ton of returners coming back, um, you know, so there's a lot of fresh faces over there and a lot of people we got to know over um, in the spring. Um, there's a glimpse here, a glimpse there. But once again, when you're competing against your own offense, you know, are we good? You know, are we OK? You know, th these questions until um, until we line up against Colgate, um, we're not going to be able to answer these questions. And, uh, um, you know, my my expectations on defense um, have to be set in a way um, and measured in a different way. Um, but, you know, we fully expect to, to to play with great effort and great intensity and play smart football. And um, we'll see and let the talent take over when we find out when we take the field against Colgate. Let me chat with a little bit with some of the players here. Jameson, I'm going to start with you, if I could. Uh, I remember we were covering for ESPN uh, back when you were a, a, a first year. The first game, I don't remember exactly who it was, but it was the first game up. It was up in Ithaca that you had some major exposure. And everybody's comment was, this guy is a player. And this guy is, is going to be the future of this offense. And it's been playing out that way. You know, last, last year, seventh in FCS in total offense uh, per game, second team, all Ivy. So with that as your backdrop and with a new coaching staff now here, what what what's your anticipation? What are your hopes coming into this new season? Yeah, I just want to say what's up, Jack. It's good, great seeing you. Um, good to see you as always, and you're so much fun to to watch on the field. I appreciate it. I just want to first off by saying all praise to the Most High. Um, my expectations this year is everything that Coach Wanstrom wants. I've had a lot of time with him this spring so far. I spend all my meetings, all my time um, on the field with him. So. We've had a really close relationship and I'm just an extension of him. So whatever his mission, whatever his goal is, that's my mission as well. And I know not only me, but the guys in the locker room, we're, we're ready to run through a brick wall for him. So we're just ready to go get after it and um, go win some games. You know, um, Cornell's has a history of losing and we're, we're ready to flip that script this year. Coach mentioned that he, he wants this to be, a, among other things, a player led team. Uh, you will will obviously you're the quarterback, you're a veteran here. How do you think that's translating what he's looking for? How's it translating to your day to day interactions with the other players? No, for sure. Um, you know, this is my senior year. Um, I've been playing in the Ivy League for the last three years. I know what it takes to be good. Um, I've had the experience. So now it's me um, latching on to the younger guys, you know. I'm 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 the fourth year now. I'm I'm the guy, and I need to be able to teach the younger guys and to show them the way as well. So, for me, just being the best leader and the best teammate I could be for these guys is everything that um, Coach Swanstrom needs me to do. And I'm just looking forward to going out there against Colgate Week One and showing 
everyone what we got. So, Damon, from your perspective, the other side of the ball, uh, give us a sense of, and I've mentioned this before, how do things look and feel different now with the new coaching staff? I feel like some of the new coaches that Coach Marshall has brought in uh, on the defensive side of the ball, uh, they've, they've helped us a lot with, you know, being where we have to be on the field at all time, being on the same accord, being on the same page at all time, and just preaching uh, about, uh, you know, we'll, we'll always bring the most intensity we have every time we step on the field. Uh, just being the most intense team, being the most relentless team, uh, making offenses uh, see it, like, say at the end of the game, like, you guys, like, they just won't go away. And that's just the message we've been preaching all spring uh, and something we'll – for sure, carry into uh, into the summer, into uh, fall camp, and into the season, and into week one against Colgate. So as, as a defensive leader here, let me ask you to look ac across the line of scrimmage at your offense and, and talk a little bit about what, when you see that offense day in, day out on the field, what do you see as the, what you think will be the strengths of this offense coming into this new season? For sure. Uh, obviously, Jameson is an amazing player. Uh, he, uh, I've been with him for four years now, and uh, since freshman year, I've seen something special in him. Uh, we've both been in the rotation since freshman year, sophomore year. So uh, I've seen him do some things that you know a lot of a lot of people, um, a lot of quarterbacks cannot do. Uh, we also have a lot of young guys, you know, a lot of young weapons that we. We plan, obviously plan to utilize um, a lot of guys that have experience uh, going against us. So I feel like we iron sharpens iron, iron sharpens iron at the end of the day. So uh, I feel like they have a lot of experience going against um, some coverages that a lot of a lot of teams don't do. So uh, when they watch film on other teams, they'll they'll be ready for sure. And I'll, it's the same question I asked Jameson, and this is it's, it's coming off of one of the things that Coach said about really needing leadership from the players themselves, right? And clearly you two are in that leadership capacity, but how has that been manifesting itself? How has that been, again, we haven't started fall practice yet, but during the course of the spring and the summer, how have you seen the two of you and, and maybe other players assume that leadership role, perhaps more so than in the past? Absolutely. Uh, a lot of our guys, especially on the defensive side of the ball, I make sure – um, you know, not just defense, but offense. I think it's a, a whole team effort uh, as far as leadership-wise. I feel like anybody can be a leader on this team. Uh, but especially on the defensive side of the ball, I feel like we've come together just to, you know, make sure that we're on the same page at all times, uh, whether it's group checks, uh, you know, getting together as a defense, going, well, like getting together on Zoom, going through plays, uh, getting in the playbook, making sure the younger guys are getting in the playbook. Uh, so I feel like anybody and everybody is going to be a leader on this team, and they're going to help us uh, win, win some games. Coach, let me come back to you. Uh, we talked about the fact that that you have literally been in Ithaca now for a number of years, head coach at, at Ithaca, and now taking over at Cornell. Um, it, it, I think Ithaca is itself is a, a it's a marvelous place. I remember coming up on my uh, my recruiting visit to there, although I do recall, um, I will say that it was the Cornell spring weekend and there's about 11 inches of snow on the ground. Um, and sometimes that happens. I was talking just the other day with with um, one of my good friends I played against for four years, who is probably the all time legendary Cornell player. And that's Ed Marinaro. You know, Ed, Ed second in the Heisman Trophy. Now, I have always said he should have won it. Um, you know, it's a league partisanship. Plus, as I said, I was a, a the monster back for our three varsity years, his and mine, um, at Yale. And I just had to follow him around. You know, the coach would say, we have go Ed goes, get, get a drink of water, you go with him, kind of thing. Um, and uh, nobody a better ambassador to Cornell football than Ed. He's excited about this year. His son is on the team, his son, Eddie. And, and you know, he talked about the fact that one of, I, he thought, was the good positive things for you is is you know the place now if Ithaca is it you got to travel to get there once you get there it's a wonderful place to be but how do you think has that helped you in in the recruiting that you've been doing so far the fact that you you've lived there for a lot of years you're not somebody who just sort of you know drove the trailer in the last couple of months yeah I mean 
Cornell itself, the school is just a, a wonderful product and the opportunity for me to bring my family um, back to Ithaca and be a part of a college town um, is an amazing place to raise your children and uh, and have that opportunity to bring my family here has been incredible. It's a an spectacular community. It's a true college town. I mean, it's like, uh, you know, I grew up in Texas. It feels like some of the big 12 schools, um, the size of the school, 16,000 students, 10,000 graduate students. Um, so it's 26,000 like college with another six on the other hill in Tompkins community. I mean, this place is built um, for 18 to 22 year olds and the whole industry of this place is built on 18 to 22 year olds. And I get to live on the outskirts and, and be a part of a marvelous college town for hopefully a very extended um, part of my life. And uh, um, Cornell itself is um, it may be seated in the most spe spectacular backdrop in the country here in the Finger Lakes, um, you know, mixed with the incredible academic opportunities that Cornell provides and um, being the biggest school in the league. Uh, you know, this is a this is a wonderful place. The the other, you know, athletic programs have um, figured it out. They've recruited well. They've competed from our basketball team winning 23 games this past year to ice hockey almost being in the finals to men's lacrosse uh, consistently. Um, you know, they're in the national championship game a couple years ago. Men's tennis was in the top 10. Uh, men's soccer finished in the top 16. So there's something here um, athletically that you can figure out and tap into. And that's my job to um, to go and figure that out. But you look a lot of the the great coaches um, here at Cornell and the people who've had success um, have really deep ties to Cornell. And maybe I don't have those deep registered ties to Cornell, but I do have the experience of being here and being a part of this community for an extended period of time, which, you know, gives me a unique experience to coach and recruit and do a tremendous job. And I tell people this all the time. OK, when it's 29 and snowing here, it's 38 and sleeting in, in, in every other city in the Northeast. So it's it's not great anywhere up here in the Northeast. So at least we have snow on the ground and we got a mountain that we can go ski on. So there's some really nice perks to, to what we have here. I, I still when we're doing games, I still make a point of coming up a day early, kind of wandering around, you know, the campus. It's a, as you said, just a, a beautiful place. Uh, some some wonderful sports traditions uh, going on for a long, long time. Um, so I, I have to ask you, and I've asked you know, already um, some of the other new coaches that you you know you know the league, you know about it, um, you know about it, its history, and now you're going to be part of the history of that league as a head coach at, at Cornell University. What were your thoughts when when the, when the administration said, we, we, you're the guy, we want you to be the guy now to step in in this this tradition, this great tradition of, of Cornell football, and you are now the guy who's going to be in charge of it. Let's put it this way. When, when the opportunity was offered, there was no negotiation. I said yes before the sentence was even finished. So um, I was ready to to be here and be in this league Um and be a head football coach in this league um, in a lot of ways, um, personally and professionally, this is what I set out to do um, since being, um, you know, my first, uh, the, the honest truth is being hired at Johns Hopkins in 2008 and working for Jim Margraff, who coached at Penn, who coached at Columbia, who had deep Albany ties with um, Al Bagnoli and Ray Piori and um, so many other coaches within the Ivy League. I can think of a million off the top of my head. So when you go to Johns Hopkins, the best thing you can do recruiting wise is go to every single Ivy League camp and recruit the overflow of, of the uncommitted Ivy players. And that's how we built such a strong program at Johns Hopkins was getting the next 25 best players to come to Johns Hopkins. And Coach Margraff being in the league, traveling from school to school and being a guy from from Texas, maybe not as well versed in the league and more used to Texas A&M and the University of Texas. And, um, you know, my dad being an alum of the University of Texas, you're kind of more in that world. And you're like, wow, you know, this is this is incredible. You get the academic, um, you know, the best academic schools in the world. And then you just get this touch of big time within the Ivy League. And uh, but you you never lose that term student athlete within this league. And uh, since 2008 and visiting those schools, um, this is truly 
um, a dream come true for me. Yeah, well, someone who's someone who's lived it for a lot of years, I agree entirely with you. It's it's Cornell is a special place. The league is an extraordinary uh, place with great traditions of success in everything that they do. So. Um, gentlemen, thanks, Jameson, Damon. Thanks to both of you for spending some time with us. Good luck moving forward. And coach, congratulations to you for this. Again, we appreciate your spending some time. Good luck to you. Uh, so we will be, ESPN will be up in Ithaca. As a matter of fact, Friday, October 11th, the first game in, in our package this year. Uh, Harvard's coming into town. So we will look forward to, to seeing the big red and what you guys can do up there. So again, thanks to all of you. Good luck. We'll see you soon. Thanks, Jack. Thank you, Jack. Thank you for having us.